of people who are happy to go to prison because they get housing there um, and they don't have to worry about the costs. 15, 20 years ago, 300 bucks a room. It was a hooker's cell, it was seven feet wide, it was 10 feet long, it was 20 feet tall. So when you're on your back looking up, it's the best view in the house. They want 900 bucks a month for that same little cell. Share a kitchen with 15 other. Shared bathroom? Oh, baby. My biggest problem is we've turned houses into our retirements. We should have pensions. We should not have to live off our home. Right. You can't find anybody to rent from. You can't do anything anymore because it's so hard to buy or rent. Anywhere in the United States. California is really bad. Sack anywhere. And just like that, though. Right. I'm getting worn down mentally. Yeah, I think anyone would, yeah. It's a, the worst thing scenario is I've got all this help, all these aids, the, all this grant money, and yet I still can't find a place. And they said that there's one place like, it is at least a year a waiting period. Some of us don't got a year. When you grow up, you get a college degree, you get all this other stuff, you know, it's like all this stuff we were told to do, and then it's like, the thought of like, especially my generation, like Gen Z or millennials, like the thought of buying a home is almost like, feels like impossible. Like it's just a dream that it's like you have. And so anybody, that, any of your friends that like get a home, you're like, whoa, well, like, what do you especially do? when you're $100,000 in student loan debt. Yeah. Anyone says, well, trying to build, you know, mid to high density housing in your area. And you say these things, oh, it's gonna cost traffic. Oh man, things are, it's going to bring down property values, blah, blah, blah. If you have said any of those things, you actually don't care about the rest of you, the people in your community, or you, you think you do, but you don't actually want to sacrifice anything for that. Hey, hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Aaron again with American Interviews. Today we're out here at the Friday Night Markets in Eureka, California to ask the question, is America facing a housing crisis? We're gonna find out. I, I rented a room over the Sea Grill about 15, 20 years ago. 300 bucks a room. It was a hooker's cell. It was seven feet wide. It was 10 feet long. It was 20 feet tall. So when you're on your back looking up, it's the best view in the house. They want 900 bucks a month for that same little cell. Share a kitchen with 15 other. Shared bathroom? Oh, baby. Many, yeah, yes with friends and friends of friends and other 15 other, you know, I'm the worst in it, but you know, the other nice ones are still pretty bad, so. No, really, yeah, it's horrible. I'm kind of like, I became a homeless recently and I'm a real estate broker, so ironies abound. All right, let's start with the prompt. So is America facing a housing crisis? Yeah, I don't know about America. Eureka is, mm, I won't even say the word, but yeah, messed up. Like I said, I mean, if rents have been 15 years tripled, right. my income didn't. Anyone else's? You know, what are you doing? I think so. What would make you say that? I think that you see people on the street, especially in Portland, um, and in any town, really. Um, I also think that you have people who are happy to go to prison because they get housing there um, and they don't have to worry about the costs. Right. Yeah. It is. I have uh, two children. It's so difficult for them to afford to be where I was at at their age. My first apartment when I got out of college, 1980, was $200. There's nothing like that for these people. It's right. so hard for them to get a leg up. So yes, right. there is a housing crisis. No. America is in a crisis, in a hole. We are, we are ruining ourselves and worrying too much about oil and money when we need to worry about family and love. Yes, absolutely. What would make you say that? You can't find anything for affordable prices and up till about before the recession, you would have been able to buy a house at, a young, at this age, at my age. Now you can't. It's, right. If you're making minimum wage, it's impossible. Right. It's kind of a loaded question. I think yes and no. I think it depends on who you ask, of course. I think it also depends on 
where you're also going to buy your home because I know a lot of private homes are being bought up by major corporations. So it depends on, again, who you ask. Like, I think also, too, there's like the cost of like just trying to buy a home comparatively from 2020 to 2024 is like non-existent. It's easier to rent in the United States for sure now than it was in 2020. So I'm just, um, I think it depends on also where you are in the country. I know it's particularly in California and Texas. Yes, it, I would say there's a housing crisis, especially in Humboldt County. I mean, it's especially if you're a college student here in Humboldt County. Um, but I think, yeah, overall, yes. But it depends on where you live. Like in Wyoming, you're gonna have easier time in less populated areas, but in very populated states, that, yeah, so there is a housing crisis. Right. But yes, municipal governments have had this for like 60, 70 years, for primarily because what they'll do is like, oh, we like our tight little knit community and we want to make sure it stays that way. So they lock down anything. So they don't want any housing because of traffic. You'll hear things like, I don't want to hear traffic. I don't want to hear, oh, there's no more parking. It's going to ruin the neighborhood character. Secret racist bullshit. But uh, that's the one that that's what they do every single time. And then by in and of itself, it's not that big of a deal. The problem one is everyone does it throughout the entire country, all the time, always, for 60 years. We take what was a huge advantage in America because we actually had space to build and there was like no conflict and we actually had a real middle class because of that. And then we just washed it all away. We washed it all away so people could like make their own little fiefdoms and stop sharing the land properly. And then now we have a housing crisis. I mean, that's, if you want to blame anybody more than anything, it's local governments. Local governments have shut down anything and they will continue to not do so. Hilariously, at the same time, they're also wondering, why are our downtowns dying? Why are our central areas dying? It's because no one can afford to live there. Why can't people afford to live there? Because housing is too expensive. So anytime you have somebody that is talking about, oh, prices are too high, inflation is too high, uh, all of this other stuff, like, oh, I can't afford labor, all that kind of stuff. If you have any of those complaints, it's probably your fault in the first place because you turned down housing at some place, at some time, somehow. Just so you guys know, 94% of you are not subscribed. Uh, it takes a second to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and uh, push it out to the algorithm. And if you guys want to drop a like and subscribe on the video, that would help me out a lot. Thank you. I've been homeless for 20 years because of a car wreck that took my life and I got involved in drugs. I've been clean and sober for like seven, eight months. And I finally got involved in a home program, which is run by the state and the city through welfare. And then also I went through partnership. They gave me a $5,000 grant for a place to live and uh, got me some workers out of Reading to help me find a place to live. I've also got two workers through the VA to help me find a place to live and they still can't find a place. Right. Uh, I mean, it's insane all the red tape and all the stuff that we go through to get out of homelessness and quit the drugs and quit everything. But I mean, I'm, me personally, I've just been going through hell trying to find a place and trying to get these workers all to work together. I mean, it's totally ridiculous. Yeah, uh, did that $5,000 grant help you out? Did it help you find a place for a while? Uh, I, I haven't found a place. It's for my deposit and everything. Uh, I still got it, but my insurance put me up in a, a motel for a while, and that's helpful. Right. But still, it's just very difficult to right. find any kind of housing. And there's tons of places empty and available. I don't understand that. Because I, I was part of uh, Camp Kildee in Olympia. We actually got world recognition on a homeless camp there that I helped build. I've been homeless in Seattle, Portland, Albuquerque, everywhere. I know about the crisis of the homelessness and the people and what they go through. And the, what the major cause of the homeless is a lot of the, the trauma that people go through and not enough help for it. That, but there is help for a lot of us out here, but Seth, there's just so much red tape, so many hoops. Love don't have the patience for it. 
and a lot of that. That's a difficult part of me being clean sober is having the patience to wait and wait and wait right. for everything. It's just it. It's just insane of all the hoops and the red tapes and everything that you got to go through. A lot of people I know out there, homeless, would want to get help if they didn't have to go through all this nonsense that they, that we go through. Right. And that's what I've been doing. And I'm still going through it a great deal. And I, I tell you, I, I'm getting wore down mentally. Yeah, I think uh, anyone would, yeah. It's a, the worst thing scenario is I've got all this help, all these aids, the, all this grant money, and yet I still can't find a place. And they said that there's one place like it is at least a year a waiting period. Some of us don't got a year. I've been uh, withholding uh, uh, my surgery for my shoulders and my knee and stuff that I have at least a place of my own to take care of myself, but I have to put everything on hold right. uh, for this. What has been your biggest obstacle in finding a place? It's just uh, the real estate agencies and stuff, uh, application fees, and then they'll take the money and then keep it, even though they got already rented out. And certainly and the, and the cost of living is just so high. And so, uh, the biggest obstacle is they illegally took away my social security. I couldn't fill out one of their uh, review applications. And I get, I'm supposed to be 100% disabled because I was beaten and tortured by state employees back in Kansas, proven without a doubt even by the FBI. So I'm supposed to be on disability the rest of my life, but I have to find a way to survive without eating it out of the dumpsters. What is the median price for a home in California right now? Four hundred and twenty-five thousand. At least uh, one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand. All of California? Well, I'm kind of hopeful because I want to get back in the business. I mean, three million median, median. million and a half. Five hundred. Five hundred. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. For oh, wait, we're talking about houses or cars? Buying the house. Yeah, correct. Twenty. For a house. That was the that was the average price probably in 1960. 50. Taking into account of all the rural areas of California, but then also how many people are in the populated areas, I'm going to say I'm going to say it's about anywhere between about 600,000 to about 800,000. But I know that's a lot for rural communities, but I, where I know like in LA, like an average cost is like 1.4. Right. So. You were pretty close. It's $850,000, which is double the national average right now. That I did know, that I did know. The median price for a home in California is $850,000. That explains a lot. <laughs> that's why people, that's why my generation isn't buying houses. We can't afford it. That's horrible, yeah. unaffordable, right. yes. In 1991, the median home price in California was $200,000, which was also double the national average. Wow. No. My biggest problem is we've turned houses into our retirements. We should have pensions. We should not have to live off our home. Right. Right. That's, that's the biggest change to me was when they convinced people this is now an investment, not a place to live. A million and a half. It's 850,000, but million and a half is, that's not far off. I think we're headed in that direction, right? That's the three bedroom model. Yeah, the, the 850 is including all of the shacks in the hills too. We bought a house in 92, or 98, excuse me, 92.5 in Eureka, two bedroom, nice yard, you know, East Eureka, la dee da. We refied it a couple times, the last time for $260,000 just before, guess what, 2008. So, you know, we, I, I kind of was going, honey, really? This, this little house is worth $260,000? But they were saying so, and the appraiser said so, and la-di-da. The, the money hit the bank, you know, we're like, hey, what do you know? And then we were upside down, 180,000 bucks, you know, three months later, or what, what? No, it was a year and three months later. 
before the housing crisis in 2008, uh, institutions and private equity firms owned about 18% of all rentals in America. Now it's jumped up to over 50% of all rentals are owned by private equity firms and institutions. Do you think we should be limiting the ability of private equity firms and institutions to invest in property and single family homes in America? Yes, because again, they're turning that into a, a profit organization, and that's simply it. A profit organization. It doesn't matter about who lives there or who doesn't live there. It matters about money, and that's not the value as us as Americans or what it should be. We have to still hold a value as for, for family. You know, and sometimes, yeah, you make, may not make the extra dollar, but you're giving a, a family a home to live in. That's way more valuable than that dollar you're making. Absolutely. That's a huge problem. The way they're snapping up everything before a, a family can get to it. Absolutely. I rented from so many families, individuals in my life. And yes, it's so much different to have a corporate renter. That's horrible. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's not right. People can't buy homes anyways. You can't find anybody to rent from. You can't do anything anymore because it's so hard to buy or rent anywhere. In the United States, California is really bad. So anywhere. And it's like that, though. Right. Um, I do because I, you know, I'm a bit of an idealist. I, you know, this world that we grew up in that our parents kind of raised us into, you're like, when you grow up, you get a college degree, you get all this other stuff, you know, it's like all this stuff we were told to do. And then it's like the thought of like, especially my generation, like Gen Z or millennials, like the thought of buying a home is almost like feels like impossible. Like it's just a dream that it like right. you have. And so anybody that any of your friends that like, Get a home, you're like, whoa, well, like, what do you Especially do? when you're $100,000 in student loan debt. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's kind of crazy, too, again, that the, we can, there's another, that's another debate for another time, of course. But I think that there's just so many things that, like, there, that I, I, again, I wish, I'm a bit of an idealist, or I try to be optimistic that I, one day I can afford a home. But I think it should be, you know, back to the hands of kind of the people, not the corporations, because it doesn't feel... Because it all just starts feeling the same. Like all the apartments are looking the same. All of, where, what happened to the idealistic world or the like, kind of the you know like American dream? You know, so it's like I really want that back. Of course, I think everyone does. So about seventy-one percent of people say that part of the American dream is owning a home, yeah. right? And that's seeming to become an impossibility for millennials and younger. Yeah, it's kind of again, it's kind of kind of sad, a little concerning though. But I think I think we're kind of maybe at a pivotal point, maybe in this election cycle, or especially not just with a presidential election, but you know the senatorial races and the senatorial races in the, in California. Like, all of it really does matter, and like, it doesn't matter just who you vote for in president. Like, there's local elections that are also like making policy changes too. Arguably more important than the national presidential election. I try to tell people all the time that it's not just the presidential election. Like you don't even have necessarily, you don't have to vote for the, the president if you can't decide on who the candidates are going to be, right. but you should be more like concerned with the local elections more right. than anything. This is something else. Now, okay, odd note, and I got to go drink some water and whatever. Think about this nightmare that is not a housing crisis. <laughs> Kurt Kramer, whose name's on a building down here, was walked into the real estate realtor's office to announce that he'd bought that building. And the collective yawns and the, oh my God, Kurt, you know, we'll buy you a drink when you need it, you know, went around the room quick and fucking A, you know, I'm walking down that street now, Pilates, a good wine bar, everything's got wood flooring, bar, upscale. They got a sushi restaurant on the roof with big old towering, you know, it gentrified like a big dog down here. Right. What they were hoping to, at least with the real estate. Now, of course, at the same time, there is this <laughs> ocean of unwashed, crazy addicts, yeah, if you want to label folks, you know, rolling around the same neighborhood. So it's like you've got really upscale folks going to Pilates in a beautifully redone building right outside, folks smoking that crack, you know, talking to themselves in tongues. So it's an interesting convergence. Right. Yeah. Some people would point to that artificially low interest rate, making uh, making it able for uh, property developers to they're more incentivized to make luxury properties. Ding. Big attacks right off the whole nine. I mean, if you lose out, you get to buy back in a whole. Yeah. Right. It's a game. And, you know, I, honestly, the thing about being a broker is whether you're in stocks or whatever it is, you make money. The fucking market crashes, you just short. 
or, you know, deal with foreclosures. I mean, you're doing turnover, and the more people have to sell their home, pardon me, you know, I, we got foreclosed on, the better, as far as business is concerned. Churn those loans. Don't let them sit with that 30-year fix. Get in there and ninja them. Ha <laughs> baby. Some people ha today have mentioned that uh, homes have almost turned into a retirement fund instead of things like pension and social security. Would you agree with that statement? I, I for one, um, invest in properties and houses, and that's the only way to invest and make your money nowadays, unfortunately, because the stock market and uh, things like that. And um, for instance, retirement, you might retire with a million dollars in 20 years, but in 20 years, that million dollars ain't worth shit. And we're seeing that now, old people trying to retire and they can't because they thought they could retire on $500,000 and that's only gonna last them four years. And that's not, that's not fair to those people before me and those generations before me that worked their asses off to get a retirement and now people like me gotta work until we're 80. So we're never gonna retire, you're just gonna die at your job. That's, that's dog food. Well, I appreciate your, your time and uh, thank you, you for sir. yeah thank you for stopping to talk to me. Uh, give me some uh, good good questions, man. Yeah. 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 You have a beautiful night at the Friday night market. You too. I appreciate you, man. Thanks. Well, it's 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 a simple <laughs> it's simple supply and demand. Uh, right. we don't have enough supply. They realize that now is the point where they can actually start gobbling up more supply and then, you know, you, you're essentially running a monopoly. It's Yes, and create the demand that they need. Dictate prices, right. Science and uh, you know, financial literacy is not very high in, in school or even in college. Right, right. I don't so, think they want you to be financially literate. I, I, I agree. I really do agree. Um, I try my best to listen to a lot of, like, especially um, feministic type podcasts on finances because it's, you know, um, and for those out there, feminism isn't just about women versus men. It means for equality for everyone. It's just my opinion, of course, um, but um, I do believe that y there is a, like a huge control of wealth and everything, and then these companies are the ones kind of dictating, especially inflation, because inflation has gone down, but obviously we, we're seeing now prices are not. That's just because those companies are the ones dictating the prices. A lot of the real estate wants you to make uh, at least three to four times the amount of rent for an income every month. I don't know anybody here that makes at, at, at over 4000 a month at all. They're putting these stipulations like that. It's just totally ridiculous. Yep. And it's just not me, but other people that are trying to find homes. Same predicament. But yet, they got all these buildings empty. It's not right. We should not have this issue in America. They quit sending the billions of dollars in bombs to Ukraine to kill people that is in that billion dollars to help out the homeless. Straight out. Man, why, why put a billion in us more in debt to send bombs to another country to kill people when they use that billion dollars to help with the homeless? Man, come on, wake up, America. Look at some common sense. We need the money, we need to help people in this country. Instead of that, send bombs over to another country. It's ridiculous. Totally. Well, I appreciate your opinion, sir. Thank you for stopping to talk to me. And I wish you the best of luck with your, your housing situation.